Hey guys, so today I'm back at Leafy Lake, an all time classic roller coaster tycoon scenario for me. I don't know why it is, but this is one I can really remember playing all those years ago on Windows XP. It's one of the easiest of the scenarios, 500 guests in three years and loads and loads of space to play with, even if you don't want to build over the lake too much. There are no rides initially, but looking through the options, there are one or two rides in each category already researched. That's not going to be enough though to keep new rides coming over three years, so I'm setting my research funding to its maximum and I'm going to prioritise roller coasters, thrill rides, water rides and shops initially. We've got a footpath all around the lake, but as I don't want guests wandering too far away from the park, I'm going to cut the path in two places so they can't walk around the whole lake. You could opt to delete a lot of the path here to earn some extra cash, but I'm going to leave it in case I want to use it later on. The max loan amount here is 50,000, so I'll be able to build a lot without needing the funds from removing the path. Okay, ride time now, and I want to start with a ride from each category to get the park ready to be opened. First up is my trusty friend, the Mango Muncher, a pre-built junior coaster. With cost and support issues, putting it on the lake isn't the best option, so I'll put it in this slightly wider area around the edge of the lake. And also, So that's the Mango Muncher ready to be opened, and that will be my only coaster on opening. Between Mango Muncher and the park entrance, I'll add a few gentle and thrill rides, twist, a ferris wheel offering picturesque views of the lake, and a merry-go-round. So the park is now ready to be opened, and I can open my first four rides too. There's still a nice bit of land between the front of my park and the walk guests need to do to reach Mango Muncher. Knowing that the 500 guest goal won't be an issue, and with three years on my side, there's plenty of time to build and experiment with custom rides. I'm still newly back to playing the game, so this is a great chance to re-familiarise myself with the process and with how to get the best ride stats. So you're watching me build a custom wooden coaster. With all this land, I don't need to place the stations close sided to the path, and this will make connecting the track back to the station a little tougher. But keeping the ride close to paths, other rides, and having it go over the lake will help me get that excitement rating up. So after the initial chain lift hill and drop, I'm getting the coaster to turn back up and around itself. Having close track parts is great for excitement and using wide bank turns and helixes will keep the intensity from getting out of control, hopefully. One feature on wooden coasters not available on others is the water drop. This really slows the car down, acting almost like brakes and also gets guests wet. By placing it where I have, it gives the illusion of the ride dropping into the lake itself. It means that cars will now be going slow enough to have an unbanked turn back to the station and not to impact the intensity. A quick change of position for the station and there is the ride complete and ready for testing. It's not super long but this should have some pretty good stats to make for a popular and profitable ride and it's not cost me too much. I still have over 30,000 of my loan available. So there we are, over six for the excitement, similar for the intensity and just a medium nausea rating which is great news for my handymen. Speaking of which, I haven't hired any staff so let's fix that. So that's five rides and a growing number of guests, and my next research attraction is the Looping Coaster. So a chance for me to have some more fun building a coaster while the initial five rides begin to generate good profit and happy guests. I'm going to move towards the back of the park with this one, and I'm playing it through pretty quickly. After an initial short dip, the ride climbs before dropping underground, another great way to get that excitement rating up. I realised I wanted to make the ride loop over the station, so I did have to rebuild the station slightly higher to achieve this. On testing, I realised the loop was too high. The cars didn't have enough speed to get over the loop, so as you'll see, I had the loop start a little lower, added some booster tracks to generate more speed for the cars, and that meant having to rebuild the station again at a lower height. Annoying, but it was worth it when the ride was complete and time was on my side in this scenario. So I ended up with some pretty good stats. Over six excitement, but below six on intensity and really quite low on nausea. A good job because as my handymen were finding out, in this park, even the mango muncher was causing a lot of sick guests. I'd forgotten to add a photo section during construction, so I added that in and was able to then extend my path to reach the new looping coaster. With guests starting to get hungry and nowhere for them to eat, I placed a pizza stall on this bit of path that, and the new ride, would encourage them toward the back of the park. I had the rapids research now, so I decided to build the park's first water ride. I built it part on land, part on the lake, and did use the landscaping tools to readjust parts of the lake to have the rapids flow in the lake rather than above it. For the rapids, you want almost every piece of track doing something, going up, down, turning, or using a special piece. 
I also sent this ride underground and below the support of the wooden coaster. However, when I tested, I realized I had failed. The excitement rating was so low. Why? It was too short. Shout out to Lord Marcel on Reddit who has compiled a brilliant guide to excitement ratings, including a chart of minimum requirements for each ride. If your ride doesn't hit these, it will get penalties. The minimum requirement for rapids is 565 feet or 200 meters. My ride was just below this, so a short extension will prevent that penalty. So with the rapids now ready too, I checked guest thoughts and that led me to place a toilet at each end of the park. Add some more handy men, set work areas and build a drink stand and fruity ice stand, which basically took me to the end of year one. With the addition of a pirate ship near the Looping Coast, I was already actually at 500 guests for the goal for the scenario. And with plenty of space remaining, I decided I would remove that path around the lake, so that earned a little bit more money to pay off some of that loan. As year one came to a close, research gave me the suspended swinging coaster, which I built right away at the front of the park, to give something a little bit more extreme and exciting alongside those gentle and thrill rides I opened the park with. I've played this through fairly quickly, but here's the finished ride. You can see I placed the station a few squares high to give it an initial dip into the lake and then a chain lift hill got the ride back up to come down with a turning descent and the track then twists and turns around itself with the help of some helixes both up and down before it returns to the station. And here's the ride stats, sixes for all three categories is good enough for me. Now, I've skipped ahead a few months, in which time the only new ride I've built is this log flume with an impressive excitement rating. It starts off close to the rapids and, like the rapids, goes over the lake. It then climbs over the rapids and back past the station, where it climbs to its highest point before sending guests back to ground level. A quick turn back towards the station and a couple more drops, including a very short tunnel, complete the ride. And that was basically all I did in year two, apart from a general park management and the addition of a couple of balloon stands. By the end of the year, I did swap out the Ferris wheel for a new identical one because guests were now bored of the original. I did the same with the merry-go-round. So into year three, I'm way ahead of the goal. My park rating is good and as long as nothing catastrophic happens, this scenario is in the bag. There's a mine train ride available to me now, so I'll use that large section of land at the back of the park, because why not? The goals are complete, and this is now just about having a bit of fun. I won't bore you with the detail of the build, but how about jumping on the test ride with me? There does seem to be an annoying bug with Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic, on iOS at least, where it decides sometimes not to show you the ride in its ride screen. So I'm using that just to monitor the speed, and I'm following the train myself all the way back to the station. A quick skip and there are the stats. Again, above six for excitement and intensity and this one has a medium nausea rating. So let's get it open. So another jump ahead and after adding the queue path to the mine train coaster, I built the go-karts close to the looping coaster. I don't need to pack things so tightly, but it does boost excitement rating and stops guests from having to walk too far. Back to that bit of land behind the mine train coaster then. I'm going to build a steeplechase. Why? Well, because I normally don't. I'm not worried about scenario goals and the steeplechase doesn't have a good throughput of guests, so when I'm worried about profit and goals, I often skip this ride. It's also quite limited in its track options, but I know guests at Leafy Lake prefer a more gentle ride. Mango Muncher has been very popular and I have several intense roller coasters now anyway. I've got the track going past itself a few times so riders can wave at each other as they whiz by and once testing is complete, you'll see the stats are quite good for this ride. I've added some more scenery around the ride just to make it look a little bit nicer and that hedged fencing gives guests the impression they are part of a medieval jousting match. Hey, we can make believe, right? So with time and money to spare, I'll keep building. First, a top spin between tracks of the log flume, which should give both rides a small boost on their excitement rating. And alongside that, a launch free fall, creating a small area of these two fairly intense thrill rides. Now at this point, I'm basically done. So let's jump to the end of the year. You can see I've added a narrow maze hugging the edge towards the front of the park and the park itself is now very profitable. If this was a four year scenario, I'd probably look to build a big flagship ride on the unused side of the park, something that incorporates the lake and perhaps uses some water scenery as well. But as I'm at the end of the scenario, and honestly, this one should be just as easy as a two year challenge, that's me done. So on to the next one. Thank you for watching. Of course, please like, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next one.